Welcome to World Math School. My name is Mario Raviglione and I am Professor of Global Health at the University of Milan and former Director of the Global Tuberculosis Program at the time when uh, the topic I'm going to present was actually formulated. And this topic is uh, uh, the end TB strategy and beyond, I would say, because we are in uh, an era where we have to think about what will happen afterward. Uh, first of all, why are we so slow in reducing the incidence and the mortality of tuberculosis? Well, there are a number of factors and all of them must be addressed by a strategy. So first of all, uh, COVID-19 caused the first increase in incidence and in mortality in two decades. There is still a large infection pool nearly 2 billion people that are infected in a latent, in a dormant way with uh, tuberculosis. There is a global aging phenomenon. There are uh, problems, uh, technically speaking, like uh, insufficient case coverage, not many detection, not much detection, not many diagnosis, not enough uh, uh, good results with treatment. We have drug resistance. We have the association with uh, HIV. There are the epidemics, if we can call it that way, of non-communicable diseases that maintain tuberculosis at high level, tobacco, alcohol, diabetes, perhaps even pollution. There is undernutrition that is affecting nearly a billion people worldwide, and that is a major factor that uh, favors tuberculosis. And then there are a huge number of uh, uh, people suffering from one of those vulnerability uh, conditions, uh, such as obviously poverty, crowding, uh, urban population living in slums, inequities, conflicts, climate change, migration that results from climate change. All of this favor the uh, onset of tuberculosis and its transmission. Well, let me just give you a preamble of the uh, TB strategies, the global TB strategies over the past uh, three decades. Well, we started with the DOT strategy in 1994-2005. You can see there on the, on the left the five components, elements of the DOT strategy. We then evolved it towards the stop TB strategy, as you can see, where DOTs became one of the elements, but the others five were essentially illustrated over there, uh, speaking of the uh, working with the health system, collaborating in the fight against HIV, engaging all providers, empower communities, and enable and promote research. And finally, we came to the end TB strategy, which is what I'm going to talk about now in the era of the Sustainable Development Goals. The strategy was approved by the World Health Assembly in the meeting on 21st May 2014 and was immediately after named or branded with the uh, name of end TB strategy to align perfectly well with the sustainable development goals that speak about ending tuberculosis. The strategy is based on four basic principles that you can see uh, at the bottom there of the uh, figure on the left, uh, that is the government stewardship and accountability, the building of a coalition with the community, the protection of human rights, of ethical standards, and the adaptation of the strategy uh, to different settings. And you have the three fundamental pillars. The first one deals with care, the second one deals with policy and systems, and the third one deals with research. You have on the on the bottom right uh, all the uh, targets that have been established as part of this strategy. And we will focus on the 2030 targets, which are those corresponding to the Sustainable Development Goals, and that you see illustrated there. 90% reduction in debt, 80% uh, reduction in incidence, and uh, zero catastrophic expenditure for people that are affected or families that are affected by tuberculosis. This is pillar one. Pillar one has four components. Diagnosis of everyone, including drug susceptibility testing universally, treatment of everyone, collaborative efforts with uh, uh, those programs and uh, institutions that fight against comorbidities, including HIV, and finally prevention. Uh, just to um, show you the main challenge to be faced, I can see the, here the uh, uh, main challenge well expressed by the incidence curve and the incidence trends. Incidence trends that was coming down very slowly and then actually started increasing during the era of COVID. And attached to that, you have here the line of the notifications. Notifications are not exactly the same as incident because majority of countries do not detect, diagnose and treat all cases. That's why we have this gap of over 3 million 
people that are there according to estimates but are not in the system they're not detected by the systems because of as i said under diagnosis and under notifications and you see that the incidence that was coming down slowly as i mentioned already is actually now in this phase of the epidemic going up because of the disruptions of uh, caused by covid now um, just very quickly on these slides, uh, this is just uh, to show you the evolution of TB diagnostics recommended by WHO. We are definitely in the era of molecular, uh, rapid molecular diagnosis with the gene expert and others, as you can uh, see clearly there. And uh, uh, we are in an era now of genomic and in fact of sequencing, which is uh, what uh, may actually change quite a lot the uh, uh, performance of programs in the future. We have uh, uh, all this has been consolidated in a WHO guideline, as you can see there. We have also new regimens for drug susceptible TB. We now enjoy a four month regimen that is an alternative to the classical six month regimen. Uh, not only in drug resistant TB, we have now uh, for the first time in, in tuberculosis, really a very short six month treatment regimen that is composed by the drugs that you see on top there, 1.1 and that are fully oral and potentially much better tolerated than the previous regimens that were lasting up to 24 months and included injectables. Pillar two is fundamental, is the uh, bold policies and supportive systems, starting with political commitment, which means clear plans and financed and budgeted plans. Um, the second one is the engagement of communities and all other, uh, let's say, uh, private care providers, the non-state sector, if you like, that also collaborate with uh, the national program or should collaborate with the national program because they see a lot of patients, especially in some countries. Uh, point C is fundamental. These are the general policies in the health system, not only the uh, case notification, uh, mandatory case notification, the vital registration, the rational use of drugs, the infection control practices, but fundamentally universal health coverage, which is what guarantees that every patient has access to uh, treatment without incurring uh, catastrophic expenditure. And now point D of the social protection and poverty alleviation strategies addressing some of the major social and economic determinants of TB. Let's look at it in a bit more detail. Well, funding for TB prevention, diagnosis and treatment is, is uh, according to the old plan, uh, pretty underfunded. We are speaking about a gap that exceeds the amount that is available, 5.8 billion in 2022, compared to 13 billion that are necessary, with a gap therefore of 7.2 billion. I want to talk about this important point of universal health coverage, which I already mentioned. Uh, the NTB strategy is part of SDG number three, and SDG number three uh, includes, uh, as you see over there, some 13 targets. One of them is ours, is 3.3, ending the epidemic of TB. The other one that is fundamental is 3.8, achieving universal health coverage. And there are two indicators there that are fundamental in uh, UHC, and this is the coverage of essential, as you can see here, target 3.8.1, coverage of essential services, which include uh, uh, TB, and you can see the situation here. You can easily notice that the countries in Africa and some parts of Asia, particularly Southeast Asia, are not covered sufficiently with the essential services to guarantee proper care of tuberculosis. So we are far from that. And the other uh, important indicator in uh, UHC, in the UHC target is 3.8.2, that speaks of the uh, um, household expenditure when you have a certain disease. And what you can see here is that there are uh, fairly high percentages of people that incur catastrophic expenditure in general, not just for TB, this is for their diseases, and they are more or less disseminated in Africa, in Asia, even in Eastern Europe. Um, we calculated the, um, the uh, expenditure in tuberculosis based on the uh, definition of catastrophic cost that you can see at the bottom, 20% or more of the annual household expenditure income with the, on direct medical and non-medical expenditure plus the indirect cost due to income loss. This began in 2016 or so, and you can see now that there are about 30 countries that have been surveyed. And what you notice there is that on average, when you have a, um, a case of drug-susceptible TB, on average about half 
of the people and uh, basically uh, uh, incur catastrophic expenditure, uh, a catastrophic cost due to tuberculosis. And when you have drug resistant TB, it's basically universal. This more than 80% will incur catastrophic cost. So we are far away. Um, importantly, I wanted to mention this, the uh, distribution of costs uh, in uh, different countries differs, but on, in general, you can say that the direct medical expenditure in dark blue are fairly contained. Much more are the, the indirect non-medical costs in light blue, and in that yellow-orange color, you have the indirect cost that is the loss of income. And against the loss of income, you can only really do uh, uh, or put in place social protection mechanisms. And this shows a very nice table from uh, WHO published uh, in 2023. It shows that for the highest burden countries where there are the uh, uh, problems, where the problems are, and you see, for example, in most of the African countries, Central Republic, Central African Republic, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Lesotho, and so on, Myanmar here that is in Asia, Nigeria, etc. you have basically no social uh, protection mechanism. In others you have, but they're not always complete okay um, the third pillar let's go to the third pillar that is due to that is uh, linked rather to research the discovery and development of new tools and on the right the research of operational type that optimize and promotes implementation quite a lot of records uh, uh, achieved during the past few years in fact uh, we didn't have 20 years ago any new diagnostic we did not have any new drug now we do have those we even have a vaccine that is under testing so there has been uh, quite a, a progress in research however the funding for research in the old uh, um, um, budget that was foreseen of 2 billion well the funding gap is of 1.1 billion so it's uh, as you can see over there pretty a major gap uh, so we'll, we will need much more to, uh, in fact, conduct uh, successfully research. I want to show you now the way I would interpret the strategy uh, today. There are three layers of action. One it belongs to the National Tuberculosis Program. The missed cases, I illustrated that, the fact that there is no universal DST, there is not enough prevention, and so on and so forth. There are uh, then threats or, uh, let's say, challenges that belong to the health sector more in general, such as, for example, that of universal health coverage or engaging the non-state sector or that of the comorbidities and so on. And there are then uh, many, I would say, challenges that belong to other sectors. They are even beyond the health sector dealing with poverty, undernutrition, poor working condition, discrimination and stigma, inequities, conflicts uh, that generate migration, migration are linked with TB. So there is a need therefore to interpret tuberculosis and the tuberculosis solution in a multi-sectoral way. And I illustrate that with this slide very quickly. You have the natural history of tuberculosis here and you have what the health sector can do. We can do universal coverage by the way improving care, improving even prevention. As you can see there, we can uh, deal with HIV in a successful way. We can deal with non-communicable diseases that uh, effectively are the determinant or the risk factor for TB. However, we can do very little when it comes, for example, to the poor living and working condition, generating crowding, poor ventilation, silicosis, and therefore conducive environment for transmission. We can do also very little when, when, for what concerns food insecurity, stigma, discrimination, marginalization, that create vulnerabilities, they create uh, undernutrition, and all of them impair uh, the, uh, the, the possibility to deal with tuberculosis effectively. Um, therefore, we have to deal, as you can see, uh, with some 10 at least uh, different sectors, perhaps even more, but some 10 different sectors that are well illustrated by the different SDGs that you see in this slide, and I repeat, that uh, uh, kind of click that you il illustrates the importance of those. A strong step again um, towards that was the uh, meeting that was held in Moscow in 2017, where the multi-sectoral accountability framework came up. We need accountability in a multi-sectoral way. And that was then illustrated later on uh, by uh, the fact that uh, the World Assembly and even the United Nations uh, asked WHO to produce this uh, uh, multi-sectoral accountability framework. So um, the question is really, uh, do we need to evolve to a version 2.0 of the NTV strategy and include a four pillar now that uh, illustrates in a more concrete and visible way what was partly already hidden in a way in pillar three, that is the multi-sectoral 
contribution. And to do so, we will need a much higher level of accountability and much higher level of commitment. We wrote this uh, particular paper to illustrate, in fact, this need. And I invite everyone, if you want, to look at the paper. Thank you very, very much.